Okay, welcome to uh, part two of a simple number guessing game uh, in Python using uh, TKinter for the uh, GUI, Graphical User Interface. Uh, in part one, we set up our, our window, we added our widgets, uh, so take a look at that. If you, if you haven't seen that already, let's just take a look at what we have so far. Um, this is going to be part two. So we have we have our window, our root window we called it. Uh, we have a label called title. We have a label called result. Uh, we have a button called check. And right now, if I click that button, it quits the root window, which closes the, the program. Uh, we also have a button called reset. It does the same thing currently, but we're going to change that in a little bit. And we have a text input box where the user can guess whatever number they, they want to enter. So let's kill that. Um, so let's take, think about our, the problem we have here. When we start the program, we need the computer to choose a number. So I'm going to call that uh, computer guess. Uh, and for now, I'm just going to hard code. I'm just going to say I'm going to say the computer guess is seven. It's always going to be seven. Okay. So what we need to do is when the user clicks the check button, it will check the user's guess versus the computer guess. Okay. So we need to make a function for that. So I'm going to define the function. I'm going to call it check. Uh, we're not passing any parameters uh, or, or values along in this case. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get the value from text guess, okay, which is this widget here. To do that, we use the get method. So I'm going to create a variable and call it user guess equals text guess and we're going to use something called the get method. Get. Okay. And what that will do is it will assign whatever value is typed into that text box it will that will go into user guess. Now the thing we have to be careful of here uh, is that this value is going to be a string value. But because we're doing numbers, we're going to need to convert that string into an integer. Because the computer guesses are from, in this case, 1 to 10. So these are all integer values. So I'm just going to use the int method, and that will make our user guess an integer. So now it comes down to like a, a lot of basic logic. Okay, So we need to determine uh, if the user's guess is higher lower or is it just right so we'll use some if statements to do that so if user guess is less than the computer guess okay. and basically we'll be uh, you know printing out a message here so I'm going to make a variable called message so if my guess is lower then I should print higher I'm going to use an elif statement. These are all exclusive possibilities. User guess is greater than the computer guess. The message is going to be if you said lower, you are correct. Um, our third possibility is if the user guess is equal to the computer. Oops guess correct and when I do this I always like to add an else statement even though there you know it must be lower it must be higher or it must be equal um, this helps us find when there's kind of an error in the in the program it might make my message equal to uh, something went wrong okay, okay so got the user guess, we've got the computer guess, we turn the user guess into an integer, we've compared it, we've created a message, now we have to put that message into the label uh, called result. So we're going to show the result to the user. So I'm going to use, in this case, the, li the label name and the, the attribute of text.
I'm going to set that equal to the message. Okay. So whatever the message is, is going to go into label result. Okay. Now to get the button to do that, the check button, the function name is check, so the command is going to be check. We don't put any parentheses, we just put the function name. Okay, so let's test it. Let's drag that over there. Okay, now we know that the computer's guess is seven, so let's try five. See what happens. Hit check. Okay, higher. Very good. Let's try eight. Okay, we know lower works. Let's try gobbledygook. Okay, that doesn't do anything. It gives a little error uh, up there, but we know the answer is seven, so we hit check. Correct. Okay, so basically, so far our game is working. Uh, we've got everything going exactly as we want it. Uh, it, if it's higher, it works. If it's lower, it works. If it's correct, it tells us it is correct. So basically, we, we do have a functioning game. Okay. So let's just to, to review. Um, well, actually, tell you what, before we do review, uh, now that we know it works, let's set it so that the computer guess is random. Okay, so instead of being seven all the time. Um, so let's do, we're going to use the random module and the rand int method. So computer guess equals random dot rand int 1 comma 10. This will give us a random number from 1 to 10 inclusive. So every time we start the game we'll get a different number. So let's give that a shot. To close it. Run it. Okay, so let's say I'm going to try 5. Okay, it's higher. 10. Correct. Okay, yay me. Um, so the problem is it's always going to be 10. Okay, so we'll, we'll talk about how to reset it in our next video. Okay, so to review, uh, we've got a random computer guess. We've created a function called check that is called when we click the check button. It gets the value from this text box, text guess, an entry box, whatever you want to call it. We use a few if statements here to see is the user guess lower or higher created a variable called message for what we want to print out and show to the user and then once that's done we show that message inside of this label. Okay, in the next video we'll talk about how to reset uh, the game and start over from scratch.